Well, hallelujah, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Can you stand to your feet, BT's legacy family? Hallelujah. God is good, amen. Before we get started in the service, can I hear you one time? Give the Lord your best praise in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, you sound amazing, family. Can you give him your highest praise this morning? Hallelujah. You see, nobody can praise him like you can praise him. Nobody can thank him like you can thank him. So this first song we're going to do said it might get a little loud. See, when I think about his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think about his goodness, how he set an old boy like me free who didn't deserve nothing, hallelujah, but he took the old coat and put on the new one, hallelujah, washed me in his blood and made me worthy of something this morning, hallelujah, and he knows my name and I know his. If you're thankful for that this morning, give the Lord your shout in this house, hallelujah. He's been a good God, amen. Look at your neighbor say, he's been a good God. Look at your other neighbor said, he's been a great God. Now give the Lord one more big shout of praise in this house. Hallelujah. Can I have you right here this morning? Oh, you look wonderful, family. Come on. Excuse me for a minute, but I got a song to sing. It might not be on key, but it's from my heart. But no one else can tell me what the Lord has done for me. Well, this might take all day, so I better start right now. So the mic get loud, so the mic get loud. The hell is coming down, down. Listen, well, I don't have a halo. No, I'm not a perfect man. But I'm just glad to be a child of God. Because when I think of where I could have been, I should have been. Would have been if he hadn't stepped in. Well, I got a praise inside, and I gotta get it out right now. So the mic get loud. So the mic get loud. The heaven's coming down, down, down. So the mic get loud. Can you praise him this morning? So the mic get loud. Hey, hey, you so the mic get loud. Oh, God. The heaven's coming down. Excuse me for a minute, but I got a song to sing. It might not be on key, but it's from my heart. No one else can tell it what the Lord has done for me. Well, this might take all day, so I better start right now. I said, it might get loud. I said, it might get loud. Hey, hey, the heaven's coming down. City might get loud, oh Lord, city might get loud, yeah, might get loud, oh Lord, the heaven's coming down, 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 the city might get loud, but I don't have a halo, no, I'm not a perfect man, oh, but listen, but I'm just glad to be a child of God. Cause when I think of where I could have been, I should have been, I would have been if he hadn't stepped in. Well, I got a praise inside, and I gotta get it out right now. So the mic get loud, so the mic get loud. Hey, hey, the heaven's coming down, down, down. So the mic get loud, oh Lord, so the mic get loud. Hey, hey, so the mic get loud. Oh, Lord, the heaven's coming down, down, down. I said, it might get loud. I said, it might get loud. Hey, hey, I said, it might get loud. Oh, Lord, the heaven's coming down, down, down. I said, it might get loud. I said, it might get loud. Oh, oh, I said, it might get loud. Hey, hey, the heaven's coming down, down, down. I said, it might get loud. Excuse me for a minute, 
But I got a song to sing It might not be on key But it's from my heart But no one else can tell me What the Lord has done for me yeah. Well, this might take all day So I better stop right now To the mic get loud To the mic get loud Oh, Lord The heaven's coming down, down, down I said, it might get loud I said, it might get loud Hey, I said, it might get loud Oh, Lord The heaven's coming down, down, down I said, it might get loud You don't have to be perfect I don't have a halo No, I'm not a perfect man But there's one thing I'm just glad to be a child of God Cause when I think of where I could have been, I should have been, would have been if we hadn't stepped in. Oh Lord, I gotta praise inside, and I gotta get it out right now. So it might get loud, so it might get loud. Oh Lord, the heavens coming down, down, down. So it might get loud, hey, hey. So it might get loud. Oh Lord, so it might get loud, hey, hey. The heavens coming down. Praise him one more time. I said it might get loud. Hey, hey, I said it might get loud. Oh, Lord, the heaven's coming down, down, down. I said it might get loud. Can I hear your family? It might get loud. Hey, hey, I said it might get loud. Oh, Lord, the heaven's coming down, down, down. I said it might get loud. Just one more time. I said it might get loud. Hey, hey, I said it might get loud. Oh, Lord. Heaven's coming down, 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 to the mic get loud. Hallelujah. Now, you see, I got a little bit of something to say on that. You said, what are you so excited for this morning? Amen. But you see, when God does something in your life, you might get just a little bit loud. When God moves on your behalf, you might get just a little bit of shout. When God takes something that seemed impossible and put it in his hands and begin to mold it and shape it into what he wanted it to be, Hallelujah, you might get a little bit excited. So you say, what happened? I said, well, it hit home with me this week. I was sharing with Pastor. I said, my wife went to the doctor. I didn't even know the appointment was there. My wife went to the doctor on my birthday, and she come back with some bad news. But see, she didn't share it with me because she loved me. She said, I didn't want to worry on your birthday. It ain't nothing big. I know God's got it. And I said, hey, I said, that's the kind of wife, hallelujah, that I want to have, amen? Somebody that knows that God's always got it, hallelujah. But you see, she went back Friday, and again, I had another appointment I didn't know nothing about. I'm about to shout and kick this piano over this morning. She went back to the doctor Friday morning. I'm just kidding, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky moved. But she went back to the doctor Friday morning. See, they went in Monday. They said they had a mass. They said it was something. They didn't know what it was. There was a mass. There was something there that they could see that they were concerned about. But you know, my God sees and knows all things. There's nothing that you will ever face that God has never faced himself. There is nothing that you will ever taste of, hallelujah, that he has not already defeated. So she went to the doctor appointment. They went in and did the scan and did all they had to do. And they said, I don't know what happened, but the mass is not there. Hallelujah. If you ain't got a reason to shout this morning, give the Lord your highest praise in this house. Well, I thank you, Jesus. He's always on time. Hallelujah. He's the God that never fails. Hallelujah. God, I thank you this morning, God, for your healing power. God, I thank you this morning for your victory. Hallelujah. God, I thank you this morning for that Holy Ghost fire that shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. If you're thankful for that Holy Ghost this morning, give the Lord your highest praise. Hallelujah. But I got this Holy Ghost. Behind you, but they're right now today as you stand here, and 
and there's greater to come in Jesus' name. So you stand victorious and you believe and trust in him as Pastor taught us to stand and believe. Now, family, I want you to say, I stand, I believe. Hallelujah. Well, listen. Well, my best days, no, they are behind. Greater things have been my destiny. Oh, 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 and your fire that's in my soul. Hey, and it won't let go. that you got that Holy Ghost this morning. Now I want you to declare everything. I'm declaring. Make it personal. Well, all you have for me. Just like David danced. And I'm boldly dancing. From glory to glory. And it won't let go A song of promise this morning. Greater is to come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As Pastor said, this is our year of power. What God's about to do, no man has seen. Hallelujah. Ears have not heard of. Hallelujah. But I know it's here. Well, my best days. No, they aren't behind me. Singing family and greater things have always been my destiny. Oh, oh, oh. and your fire that's in my soul, and it won't let go. to make this personal and declare everything that the Lord has for you this morning. And then just believe I'm declaring what all you have for me. And I'm only dancing from glory It's in my soul And it won't let go Holy, holy, holy. 
comes this morning, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. How y'all doing this morning? Amen. If you love God, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. While you're at it, turn to your neighbor, tell him good, at, good morning. You're glad to see you. In Jesus' name. Thank you guys for tuning out live stream. We love y'all out there too. Amen. And while we're at it, also, if you are a visitor or a first-timer, put your hand up. We have a special gift for you for being our first visitor, first-timer. Going once. Oh, all right over here. That's what I'm, oh, back wall, too. What? That's what I'm talking about. Give them a hand clap for coming to church this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right. I got a couple announcements real quick for you. Don't forget the ladies will be going to the paint and si on a paint and sip at the Cold Creek Coffee House in Castellia. It's right there on Main Street. Um, it's January 21st at 6.30. There's a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk. The money has to be turned in by January 19th. That's Wednesday. Um, make sure you get with my wife, Tori. She's in the back sound booth back there. Um, pay her, and we're going to listen for a good time. Now, the, the $20 only costs our covers the painting part so if you want a coffee or anything like that bring extra money for that if you don't want to paint you just want to go hang out with the ladies just come and do that too also you're more than invited amen amen and then don't forget our victory temple app we are now on um tiktok amen victory kitchen we have over 2,000 2,500 followers already Amen. And we got over 200,000 or 100,000 likes on one of our videos in Jesus' name. So we're getting the word out there and we're showing how good our God is and what we're doing in the community. Amen. But then also on our Victory Temple app, if you download that, I don't know if you do or not, you can also pay your tithes. I know sometimes for me, I forget to stop at the bank so I can get on my Victory Temple app. I can go to the Give button. I can get, pay my tithes right on there. I promise if I can figure out the app, you guys can figure out the app. Amen. Amen. But there's all kinds of also other things on there. Um, it tells what's going on with pastor's sermons. There's updates, upcoming events. There's all kinds of good stuff you can do on the Victory Temple app. Amen? Amen. You guys are quiet this morning. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, and then don't forget, every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, uh, you can go to Berardi's, 
and have fun with Patrick in Jesus' name. There, the men all get together to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can have, go have coffee. You can have breakfast, or you can just sit there and fellowship. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I got for you. Amen. I heard we're supposed to get a snow tonight, so bundle up and be prepared for that. Amen. Amen. And then, all right, I got a funny for you. Amen. If you don't like it, just laugh anyways. It makes me feel good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I heard about this daughter, and she walked up here to her dad. She said, Dad, where did, where did people come from? So she, he says, well, honey, he said, Adam and Eve, God made Adam and Eve. And then after a while, they had babies and so on and so forth. And here we all are. That's how it worked. So then the daughter said, okay. So she goes to the mom and says, Mom, how were, where, where did people come from? The mom starts telling, said, well, a long, long time ago, we were all monkeys. And from there, evolution came, and we all graduated and became humans. So that little girl got mad. She went back to her dad and said, Dad, you lied to me. She said, Dad, Mom said we came from monkeys. She, he said, well, honey, he said, I was telling you about my side of the family. She was telling you about her side of the family. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, that's all I got for you. Stand up. We'll bless you, offering. Amen. Amen. Somebody's going to medical school or something. God bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. you smarter than me. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us back to church again today, Father God. And God, we thank you for joy and peace and happiness in the atmosphere. God, we ask you to bless our pastor as he gets ready to minister the word. God, we thank you in advance for the salvation that's going to take place. God bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen.
sometimes you just got to tell him to God be yourself. No matter what you have need of, God, just be yourself. Just be everything that you promised in your word to be. Hallelujah.
Somebody give God a shout of victory in this house this morning. Can we praise him just for a moment before we get started? Just lift your hands towards heaven and give God some praise in him. Come on, let's worship him just for a minute. Let's just worship him. anybody in here that just wants God to be himself this morning. Somebody praise him. Just give me one shout of victory. Come on, give him a shout of victory. Let's give our praise team a big hand clap as they're being seated. Praise God. Are we ready for the word this morning? I'm just not going to do nothing. I'm just going to jump right in. Can I just jump right in this morning? We're talking about the double anointing this year, the double, but we must understand what the double really represents and what you're getting when you get the double. Because if you just run out there and get a double portion, you ain't going to have no idea what to do with it. Come on. Amen. Come on. You ever got anything you didn't know what to do with it? You ever opened up a Christmas present and wonder why they gave me this? I don't know what to do with it. All right, you live long enough, you're a parent long enough, you're going to get something from somebody, one of them children, and they're going to say, Dad, we thought of you, and you have no idea what to do with it. And then you're going to lie and say, oh, I always wanted one of those. We got to understand what we're about to do with it. So open your Bibles this morning to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to go into David this morning. I want to go into David and Saul. Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 32. Doug, say amen. All right, we all there. So here we go. 1 Samuel 17, 32 reads like this. It said, David said to Saul. Now, we're talking about fighting Goliath. Anybody in here got a Goliath they're fighting this morning? Anybody got any trouble they're fighting this morning? Well, if you don't, you just, I'll be with you next week. Just hold on. David said to Saul. Let no one lose heart on the account of the Flintstone. Let's just put it this way. Nobody lose heart on account of the enemy. Your servant will go and fight him. Notice David never put himself in authority. David said, your servant. He never said, here I am. 
you're the king. Now I'm going to overrule you. I'm going to do what you can't do. David never said that. David followed guidelines. David followed authority. David called him the king. David said, I am a servant under you. I'm not here to take your position. I'm not here to overthrow you, but I'm here to serve you. You know, when God walked in your life, he said, I wasn't here to overthrow you, but I was here to serve you. But somehow we just don't treat God with the respect that we need to treat God. When you go to God, he's not a God that you could cuss out. He's a God that needs to be worshipped. He's not a God to be told off. Who are we to begin to cuss God in America? We need to stand up and bow a knee and be like David and say, God, here I am. I didn't come to overthrow you. I come to be your servant. And what you need is what I'll do. If that enemy needs to be killed, I'll kill him. If you need a drink of water, I'll get you a drink of water. If you need something to eat, I I ain't got nobody here because we all want to be the king. Take my coat off in a minute. I'll fight y'all staring at me like that. David said, I'm your servant. Ain't it amazing how we get the roles mixed up with God? We preach so much that we a king just like God. You're not God. That's a lie. That's a sermon that should have never been preached. You are not God. I'm as equal as God. That's another sermon that should have never been preached. You ain't as equal as God. God said his ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts is higher than your thoughts. He said without him, you shall die and perish and live a life in hell. I'm not as high as God. I serve the most high. I serve the only God. I come in to be a servant to my king. He said we God. You ain't God. If you God, go fix what's going on. I better slow down, huh? I better just just slow down, huh? We have been preached so much lies, been taught so many lies so that we feel something that's not true. The truth is we all sinners and we all been saved by grace. The truth is, one time in our life, we've all lost heart because the enemy was prancing in front of us because we got a bad report. But David said, when you are a servant and you have a servant's heart, who cares what the enemy got to say? Stand up and go do what you got to do in the name of the Lord. I need somebody in here that will just stand up and do what needs to be done in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go on. Can I go on? I'm going to slow down. I don't mean to preach so fast. Hold on. Saul replied, you are not able. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody told me I wasn't able. My father passed, wasn't in the grave 24 hours. The ministers would call me and say, you're not able to do it. You're not able. You're not able to pass that church. You're not able. You need me. I don't need you. I need the anointing of Jesus Christ. He will make me able. Although I'm not qualified, although I don't have the credentials that you think, God said he will make you able. People will roll over if you know how many business deals we've made this year. We got big things coming up in 2022. Big things. Big things in this church. They're in the making right now. Big things. You ain't able. I'm more than able. You speak for yourself, I'll speak for this congregation. We are more than able. Why? Because we are servants underneath God. We ain't looking for the kingship. We ain't looking for the queenship. We looking to be a servant under God. I'm the king of my double wide. Well, stay there. Don't come here. We got one king in this house. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Saul replied, you are not able. When I was in school, people would tell me I wasn't able. Have you ever been in life 
when you didn't need nobody to tell you that, you told yourself that? I'll preach to myself this morning. That's okay. You can all sit out there and act like you know more than me. I'm fixing to blow your mind in a minute. We're going to go somewhere. Browns ain't playing today. They didn't make it, so we got time. If you was God, why didn't you let them win? If you was God, why don't you fix that marriage you're living in? You can't until you get God's help. Oh, we quiet, we quiet up in here. Saul said, you're not able. How many times you sat there and said, I'm not able? I can do all things. Yes, you can. Why ain't you? What's holding you back? What's the barriers on your life that you can't crawl over because you want to say it on the outward, but you can't do it on the inward? See, we're going to talk a little something here. Before, before they were Saul, they were Samuel. Can we preach Bible now for a little while? Here we go. We're going to go Bible. Before they were Saul, they were Samuel. Before they was David, they were Saul. Before they was David, they were Saul and they were Samuel. Before they were Samuel, there was all kinds of other prophets in the Bible trying to fulfill. Before they were Samuel, they was Cain and Abel. And the devil thought he won when he took out the man because God said that by your seed, by your loins, by your body, you will give a Savior. So when the child was born, the firstborn, Satan said, I'll just go ahead and take care of that right now. Before they was you, they was a daddy. Before they was a Luke Walters, they was a Reverend Lonnie R. Walters. And before they was Lonnie R. Walters, they was a Lonnie Walters. And before they was a Lonnie Walters, they was a Mr. Walters. And before they was a Mr. Walters, I don't know what his name was. I'm lost right there. But they was somebody. Before. Before they was Saul and before they was David. There was a Samuel. Samuel was a man of God. Oh, we quiet anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Samuel heard from God. He never listened that he could not do anything. Because when they went to Samuel and said he couldn't do it, he went to God. I don't know why in America when you stand up and think you got to do it all yourself, to work all those stupid little things you got to work to try to make it me. Why don't you quit doing it on your own and tell God, I need you to do it? My wife woke up with a 195-beat heartbeat. I know there wasn't nothing I could do, but my God could do anything. So I said, God, this is out of my control, so why don't you do something? And to your amazement, it said, whoop, right back to normal. Why? Because he is God. I ain't got nobody in here that got a God. It's all right, all right, all right, all right. First, now, we're going to teach for a minute. We're going to teach. And I, now, everybody, want, everybody don't think I teach stuff. Yeah, I actually do pencils. <clears throat> class number one. <laughs> class number one. You ready, class number one? I won't stay teaching long, so you better, you better just get what you can right now because I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher, and I can't help that. Everybody's got their own anointing. Mine is to yell at the devil. That's just my anointing. Don't come up here to talk to no devil. I've never been in a fight once, and I talked to that guy. You know, I'm going to give you a black eye. I ain't never said that. Get out of my face. That's what I've said. Cowards. We've raised cowards in the body of Christ. Taught them so much they became cowards. The giant walks in front of them and they go try to hire somebody to take care of the problems. All Saul did was try to hire somebody to get him through his marriage. He tried to hire somebody so little boo-boo would come home. He tried to hire somebody so he didn't have to face the piper. It's time you try to hire your problems away and stand up and say, I am a servant to God and I come to set my people free. guys feel like you're about to sleep. I'm going to preach to you. Hold on. I'm going to wake you up. Then I'm going to go back to that side. I'm going to wake them up. And then I'm going to wake you up here in a minute. Before they were Saul, they were Samuel. Samuel was a man of God. Samuel represented God. 
He was a holiness man. I don't know why the church tells you you can sin. I don't know why the church tells you you can sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. We call them anointed swingers. I call you going to hell until you get your life right. He was anointed. God moved in his life because he stood for the righteousness and the holiness of God. And God is not going to move in America until we stand for the righteousness and the holiness of God. You just kidding yourself. <laughs> Doing okay, buddy. Samuel said, I am a man. I need people. You know, I, this is the thing, man. I walk up to people. I, I'm just telling you my, 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 my problem. I walk up to people, and they say, well, I'm a Christian. Like it's a bad thing. Like it's a bad thing. I talk to sinners, and they say, well, you're a preacher, and they act like that's a bad thing. And then I'm supposed to eat humble pie and say, well, we all have the right to choose. No, it's not a bad thing that I'm saved. It's a bad thing that you're not. Shame on the preacher. Shame on him. Telling you a lie. What we quiet up in here. On my deathbed, please don't come in here and tell me no lie. You walk in that room, you open that door up, and you look down and you say, that force of hell that's got a hold of him, get your hands off of him right now. In Jesus' name. You got to tell the truth. Don't need no pity prayer. I, I, I get tired of hearing people, they go to pray for somebody who's got cancer, and they pray a pity prayer. Samuel never prayed a pity prayer. Oh, God, if you move, uh, she's in so much pain. Uh, oh, God, just ease it a little bit. Uh, oh, God, we know that you're in heaven, and we know that thy will will be done. Well, why'd you pray that other three minutes? His will's for you to stand up on your own two feet, walk up out of that room, totally healed. That is the will of God. I ain't got nobody up here. I got to go. I got to go. I got to move. I ain't going to get there. Hold on. I'm running out of time. Before they were Saul, they were Samuel. Samuel was a man of God. Somebody say Samuel was a man of God. Samuel was leading God's people. Hey, 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 don't look at me that way. That was his job. My job is to lead you. You might go to four tomorrow, but my job is when I go to bed tonight to make sure I'm praying you through. That's my job. That's my job. Don't judge me by my job, and I won't judge you by yours showing up late. <laughs> I've never seen it, man. You show up late to work, it's all right, but when you call that preacher, he better be Johnny on the spot. Woo. We're getting hot up in here. Samuel was a man of God. And all of a sudden, the congregation of God. Who did I say? The congregation of God. Did I say the congregation of Goliath? Nope. He had a congregation. The congregation of the enemy. Did I say that? Come on, come on, come on. Don't worry, you're not in one of those religious churches this morning. You can say no. No. Samuel was the pastor of God's people. I like that. I like that enthusiasm. And, and he was God's people. It was whose congregation? God's congregation. God's people went to Samuel and said, Samuel, everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is swinging. Everybody else ain't staying married. Everybody else is accepting same-sex marriage. Everybody else is doing it. We want to do it too. They got a king. We think it's right that we should have a king. They're living in sin. We think it's right that we should live in sin. Don't that sound like the church that's going on in America today? Because they're doing it. We should be qualified to do it. No, you should be qualified to stand up for the righteousness of Jesus Christ and set the captives free. You need to set them free. They put us on YouTube. I bet you they take us off now. Hold on. They went to Samuel and they told Samuel, they're doing it. 
We want to do it. What's that sound like you in your church right now? Let me use something. Let me do you something. They drinking coffee. I'm going to drink coffee. You know, when I smoked my first cigarette, it was because I, my friends was doing it. I didn't even have a desire for it. Didn't even like the smell or taste of it. But they smoked it. I smoked it. Well, we quiet up in here. Because I wanted to accept what they was doing. After all, they said they was Christians too. And so then I didn't think smoking was for me because I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of activities. And so I decided, you know what, I'll just chew instead. Ain't that funny how you try something and then that sin don't work for you. So you say, you know what, I don't need that one, but I'll try something else. So that way I could change my level and I got over that sin, but I was going to cover it up with another sin. Samuel didn't play that game. We quiet up in here. I remember when I thought I was called to preach. We doing all right in here. I was, I was 23 years old, and, 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 and I thought I was called to preach. And I remember going to my daddy, and I said, Daddy, I, I'm ready to come, man. I've been called to preach. I thought I was going to preach for five years. I didn't do nothing but clean toilets. I didn't preach. He told me that was the gospel, learning how to do things before you get to try to tell somebody else what they do. Maybe we ought to learn what we're doing in life before we start telling somebody else what to do in life. And anyway, anyway, you know, I, 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 so I went to my grandfather. My grandfather wouldn't like these modern-day Christians. These modern-day Christians will tell you get in the platform with sin. My grandfather was one of those preachers, one of those teachers, one of them hardcore men that said, you get in that platform with sin, God can stop you. I went to my grandfather and said, yep, I've been called to preach. You need to teach me revelations. He said, I ain't teaching you nothing until you overcome that addiction in your pocket. I said, it's just true. He said, yeah, but how are you going to tell somebody else how to overcome their addiction when you're addicted to something yourself? He said, when that little can controls your life, how can you tell somebody else how to do in their life? you got to overcome the little foxes if you expect God to make you ruler over big things. Ain't got nobody up in this house this morning. Stare at me if you like. I don't care. I've been stared at all my life. Let's get back to this. Saul. They went to Saul, God's congregation. They told Saul straight up. They said, hey, listen, we want to do what everybody else is doing. We want a king. Saul took it to offense. He got upset. A lot of us get upset when they attack you because of God, and we think they're attacking you. They're not attacking you. They, they, they went to, they went to <laughs> they, Saul, Samuel, went to God. This is the thing we don't do no more in America. I've never seen yet one of our, I, I ain't never seen it yet where somebody up high will just call America to the state of prayer and make everybody bow their knee to God and say, God, we in trouble, and now we need you to bring us out like you did World War II. We need America to come to a day of prayer where we can agree on one thing, that we got God and God Almighty, and he can do all things through him. I said he can do all things. If we would come back to the power of prayer and agreement instead of being divided and stand for God, while America would change in one day and 24 hours, it would do a 360. I ain't got nobody up in here because we don't want to think about it. Samuel went to God and Samuel said, God, they hate me. Read it. That's what he said. God said, they don't hate you, Samuel. He said, yeah, they do. They want a king. He said, they don't hate you. They hate me. He said, they hate me. Why are we doing in America today? We be hating on some God now. We be mocking some God now. He said, they hate me. Samuel said, why? He said, they're rebelling against me because what I stand for. And he said, they don't like me no more. He said, they're telling you that I'm not big enough to be their God. He said, they're telling you that my godship, my kingship is no longer good enough for them. They could do better than what I can do. So now they want to move in the flesh instead of the spirit. He said, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you Saul because none of your sons are qualified. All your sons, Samuel, are in sin. They're not living for God. Just because your mom and dad's living for God don't mean your children's living for God. You better grab a hold of those rings and pull them back in. Because God flat out said Samuel's children was not fit 
to be his servant. He said they ain't in the will of God. Just because you're serving God, don't expect your children to be doing everything you're doing. You better get your nose in your children's life before it's too late. I ain't got nobody up in this house. You all right? Okay. You coming back next Sunday? All right, I got one coming back. Hold on. God said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them Saul. He said, you go on down there, and we're going to give them what they want. You see, this is what we don't understand in the body of Christ. We don't understand if you make God angry or you push God to a point, he'll give you exactly what you want, no matter if it's good for you or bad for you. He'll give you exactly what you want. Uh, don't look at your significant other and say, man, I wish I wouldn't have pushed so hard. So hold on. He'll give you exactly. Some of you caught that. Some of you will laugh on the way home. Hey, exactly what you want. He went and got him Saul, brought Saul in there. What was Saul? Saul was the king of the flesh. He represented the king of the flesh in the Bible. That's what Saul represented. Saul was tall. Saul was dark. Saul was handsome. Saul was built just right. The women Googled when they walked by because he had it going on. He was the king of the flesh. And the people no longer wanted God. They traded God for the king of the flesh. And what did flesh get them? A crazy king. A crazy Saul. He was so crazy that he stole their wives, stole their daughters, wouldn't lock them up. And God had to go send his servant to get them back. Saul was crazy. What did flesh get him? Flesh got him killed. We're quiet, ain't we? His flesh led him to suicide. But the people no longer wanted God. They wanted flesh. How many times in life we traded God for flesh? Trading for a home. Trading for somebody else's wife. I know we took him off YouTube on that one. traded your children because we serve the king of the flesh. Now, I'm going to get something straight with you. God is not against kings. That's a lie from the enemy. God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, he told Abraham, he said, from your seed, you'll give birth to kings, and I'll count it as a blessing. He told Jacob, from your loins, you will produce kings, and I will call it a blessing. God was not against the kingship, but what he was against, it was not his time for them to have a king. Have we pushed God so hard that we pushed past God's timing, and now we're in our timing, wondering why we're suffering what we're suffering, because it was not God's perfect will for them to have a king yet. It was his will that they followed him. Well, we're quiet. So we left God's time, went to his time. Now we got crazy Saul. Now we got David. Are we with David? David says, I'll kill that man. Pastor, you shouldn't say it like that. That's what he said, okay? It ain't a hate crime. That's what David said. That pastor up there preaching hate crime. No, David said, I'm going to kill that man. You want to pay me? I kill him. Tired of being broke anyway. David said, I'll do it. Come on, man. That's what he said. Because David asked him, what's the bounty, man? He said, I give you my daughters. I give you the kingdom. I give you everything. I'm just scared of this devil. This devil's going to take everything I got. Some of us in here are scared right now. So we told, we told the devil, we'll give you anything. We'll give you my husband. We'll give you our family. I'll trade you my soul. I'll trade you my morals. I'll trade you my peace. I'll trade you my joy. I'll trade you everything. Just leave me alone. You cannot trade with the devil and expect the devil to leave you alone. He's going to come back for more. you got to stand up with your stones and fight that rascal so he don't come back. Up in here, that's all right. Hold on. 
I ain't even done yet, man. You might as well sit back and buckle up and eat some popcorn. David said, I'll kill him. Saul said, you know what, little man? I'm two foot taller than you, four foot broader than you, whole lot better looking than you. I'm willing to risk you. He said, after all, I'm a king. David didn't want the kingship. Saul went and gave him his armor. David put the armor. I know we've all heard it preached. David put that armor on and it just didn't feel right. That's what God said. God said it didn't feel right. He said it didn't feel right. He couldn't move in it. So his armor, Saul's armor wasn't his armor. You know, you know so Saul's armor just wasn't David. Oh, wow. They, they preach at, you know what I'm saying? But, but they missed the whole point. You see, because it, you're right. David could not wear the king's armor because it wasn't God's timing for David to be king. Are you trying to wear somebody's armor? Are you trying to wear an armor that's not right for you? And you're saying you're more mature in it, but it's just not your season to be the king yet. I didn't say it wasn't coming. It was not God's time. Just like the people made Saul king, they made God do it. But David had enough common sense with God and loved God so much when he put it on. He said, God, I know this is not your season for me to be king. I don't want it. The flesh said, take it. How many of us in here would have took it and just sold it? Here, can you autograph this? That way I can get a little extra money out of it. I got, I got Saul's armor. He autographed it right here. You know I want a million for it. Right here. David said, I'm not here for the flesh. I didn't come for the fleshly God. David said, it's not my season. He gave it back. Oh, wow. Sometimes... When the king, no, that's not sometimes, all times, when the king of the flesh, when Saul's spirit comes, King Saul's spirit is still here on this earth today. And when that spirit of the kingship of the flesh comes and offers you an armor that's not supposed to be your armor, but it looks good, you better stand up and say, it's not my time to wear that. I'll just stick with God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Now what would have happened? If it, what what would have happened? Now, this it was before David was anointed. You remember the story? David was sitting up in Jesse's house. That's where my little boy got his name. At. He was sitting up in Jesse's house. His name's Jesse David. I named him after Jesse because Jesse had David. I thought that was awesome. Too powerful man in the Bible. Anyway, we're sitting up in Jesse's house, and Jesse's sitting there, and, and, and they come with the oil. They had a ritual going on. You ever have a ritual going on? Every Friday night, you used to get drunk. A ritual? You got drunk before you went to bed, so they thought you made you sleep better. A ritual? Come on, man. Don't look at me that way. Help me out. A ritual. He had a ritual going on. You know, ain't it funny that David wasn't in the ritual? We got a lot of rituals going on in the church today, and God's not there. They did the ritual, and they could not find the one that was anointed. And then they said after the ritual, you got anybody else? I got that little guy out there named, named David. So we know David come in. He broke the ritual. He got anointed. We know that. David knowed he was anointed to be king, but yet he knowed it wasn't his season. Just because you're anointed now don't mean your season's now. Well, we quiet. Amy. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. I'm going to make more sense on this. Just give me a couple seconds here. So, 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 so his season was not now. What would have happened if David would have wore that armor anyway? Don't look at me that way. Some of us has wore, wore car payments that we didn't need. Some of us has wore house payments we didn't need. Some of us has wore credit card payments we didn't need. That's all the armor you're dressing yourself in. That's all fleshly things. That's what you're dressing yourself in. We talked in the last two Sundays about the armor of God. What you dressing yourself in? You dressing yourself in debt, praying to God to take you out when you're telling God, I'm not going to use wisdom? Come on, come on, come on. Talk to me now. Talk to me. Hold on. So David, what would have happened if David would have wore that armor? He would have died. No, he wouldn't have died. You couldn't touch David's life because he was anointed for God, and you can't touch what God has anointed. He wouldn't have died. 
but he would have not have represented God. He would have represented the king of the flesh. So when he walked to that battlefield, he could not say, thus saith the Lord. He would have had, thus saith Samuel, because Saul, because when he got there, he no longer represented God. He would have represented Saul because everybody would have thought Saul was on the battlefield and not David. Because he would have had his armor on, he had his shield on, and everybody would have been praising Saul. Saul didn't want no praise, don't tell me that. He tried to kill David when he come back from the war. And they said Saul killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And and David's wife got mad standing in the rooftop and say, why are you dance so crazy? He looked at her and said, do what you want, but I'm going to serve God because I know what God brought me out of. So I might look crazy to you, but I'm worshiping with the spirit that I have inside of me. I need somebody to look a little crazy. You got seven minutes. I ain't even done yet. Hold on. I let you out early five, five minutes last week. I'm taking them back this week. Hold on. If David would have wore that armor, he would have represented Saul. Saul would have got all the credit. When Saul gave David that armor, Saul knew if David would wear it, he would get the credit. Oh, we quiet up in here. Have you ever had an idea and you told somebody that idea and they went and did it and you didn't and they act like it was theirs? You live long enough, it'll happen. And then they say, I don't know how I came up with it. You idiot, I gave it to you. Ain't it funny, you came up with an idea and they'll forget about you when they become famous. But the flesh could not trick David and could not stop what God had anointed on his life. Here we have two kings, one that's anointed king and the other one that has not been anointed yet to be king that don't even want to be king. Yeah, he wanted to be king. No, he didn't. He killed that sucker and went home. He grabbed his bounty and went back to the fields. He didn't go to the mansion. He stayed in the fields 15 years after he killed the giant. Did you hear what I say? I know we all looking for that one big thing to make you famous. He had that one big thing. It didn't make you famous. He went back home. Why did he go back home after he defeated the battle? It wasn't his time yet. We are pushing God to do something that is not time yet. The body of Christ is pushing God to come back, and it ain't time yet. We're pushing for the latter-day rain, and it ain't time yet. You are better off to get out of your flesh, get in the spirit, and let it come. Because when it comes, it cannot be stopped. But if you push it in the flesh, it can be stopped. You doing all right? David goes back home. Are we with me? David, why did he went back home? Fifteen years later, what happened? David went and became king. Why? Because it was his time. What does all that got to do with us? What does that have to do with the armor of God? What does that have to do with you and have to do with me? Okay, pastor, what's that got to do with us? God said in the New Testament to put on the armor of Christ. The problem of it is nobody knows where that armor come from. In the Old Testament, God got mad at the people. Who did he get mad at? Did God get mad? Yeah. God got mad at what? Whose people? His people. Who did God get mad at? Who did God get mad at? I don't think God's happy today in America, neither, the way the churches is doing. You can't accept sin and expect God to move in your house. We're quiet anyway. In the Old Testament, it said God got mad at his people. And the old prophet described it like this. It said God dressed himself in the righteousness of the breastplate. It said God dressed himself with the shoes said God dressed himself with the belt, said God dressed himself with the armor of God, and he went to battle against his people. Well, we quiet, ain't we? God dressed himself in the armor of righteousness. Read it. Said he dressed himself in the armor of truth. How do you expect God to walk with you when you ain't in truth? 
if God needed the armor, what makes you think you don't need the armor? <laughs> you ready for this? I don't know if you are or not. God said, do not fear the people. He said, I dressed myself in the armor. God went and did what he had to do in the armor of God, but yet it was not his people's timing to wear the armor of God. Only God wore the armor in the Old Testament. And the New Testament, because of the cross of Calvary and because of what Jesus did on the cross, God took his armor and he gave it to us. And he said, you should have a better covenant because now you left that season and now it's your time to, de oh my God, it's your time to be the warrior. It's your time to take back what the enemy stole from you. They tried to push me in the Old Testament to give them my armor, but they was not ready for it because you live underneath the anointing of Jesus Christ. You can have my my armor, the armor of righteousness, the sword, the shield, the shield of faith, and the shoes of peace, and the belt of truth. Dress yourself not in nobody else's armor, but you're dressing yourself in my armor. Just like David would not dress himself in the fleshly armor because he didn't want the flesh to get the credit. Now I'm telling you to dress yourself in my armor so I can get the glory. Do I got anybody in this house that's going to dress herself in the name of God. <laughs> David said he didn't like what they did. So he's going to do it God's way. God said, I don't like how you're doing it. So I don't want my name with you. God said in the Old Testament, he said, I don't like what you're doing. I don't like how you run in the church. I don't like how you live in. I don't like the adultery that's going on. I don't like the lying that's going on. I don't like the, I don't like the sin that's going on. God said, I don't like that. So instead of giving you the armor to fight the battle, I'll dress myself. And I'll fight the battle. In the New Testament, he said, I got enough faith in you that you will do the right thing, that I ain't going to give you hand-me-down armor. I'm going to give you the genuine armor, the genuine power. There ain't no make-believe. There is no seconds or thirds. What I give you come right off the hot lines. This is the original. It's not a copy. It's not a fake. It's real silver. It's not fake. It's real gold. It's not fake. It's real healing. It's not fake. It's real anointing. It's not fake. It's real power. It is not fake. God said what they was not ready for, this generation is ready for. He said they was not ready for the coming of Christ but in the generation that we live in, God said you are ready to usher in my son. This is our season of double power. This is our season of double anointing. This is our season of the armor of Christ. Why? Because God said you are ready. Do I got anybody in this sanctuary that can stand to their feet and say I am ready. Give God some praise up in his house. Listen, we're done. We close. Let's keep standing. We out of here. There is a point in life that you can push God to when it ain't your season. Just because your prayers ain't been answered yet don't mean they're not going to be answered. It's just not your season. Don't tell God I need a king when you really don't need a king. Because he'll make you eat manna until it comes out your nose. God says in his season, in his time. Because when David became king, sin could not stop what God put in motion. Though he sinned, though he murdered, you could not stop. Because David represented the king of the spirit. I asked you this morning. What are you going to represent? 
Are you going to represent what's going on, the king of the flesh? Or are we going to represent the king of the spirit? For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Somebody say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Give God a shout of victory up in this house. I'm going to clear something up and we're going to pray. If you're in this house this morning and you got something going on in your life, get ready because God's going to touch you. It's your season in Jesus' name. God told him, they said, whose problem, whose fault was it that the blind man did not see? And God said it was nobody's fault that he was born that way. Nobody's sin. Sin did not cause that to happen on him. He said he was born that way so I can get the glory. God would not give them the armor in the Old Testament because they would not give God the glory. God gave it to us in the New Testament so we can stand up for the righteousness and the holiness so that Jesus Christ can get all the glory. Until Jesus gets all the glory, nothing will change. It's time that we stand up with the armor of God and give God all the glory. You in here this morning and you got something going on in your life, just lay hands on yourself right now. Say, God, I got the armor that you trusted me with. God, I thank you. As King David walked into his season, I going to walk into mine. God, I thank you that I am healed, that I am free, and I am set free. For who the Son sets free, I am free in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a shout of victory in this house. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for this congregation. God, I ask you to bless them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. God, give them the best week that they ever had with no limitations upon their lives with better to come. And God, we thank you that you trusted us with your armor in Jesus' name. And the congregation of the Legacy Church says, I love you all.